I have a very interesting EG today and I will start with a very interesting case before I review the EG. Besides the review of EEG, we will also review the MRI of this patient, the depth electrode recording in some patients, something about a PET scan, and something about epilepsy surgery. So let's get started. So it starts with a story. And this is a story of patients who present with temporal lobe epilepsy. When people think about seizures in epilepsy, they envision a person who has a tonic-clonic seizure, who is convulsing, going rigid, foaming from the mouth, and shaking. But when patients with temporal lobe seizures present to you, the presentation is quite different. Most patients present with episodes of spacing out that last anywhere from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Patients who have a warning or an aura before the seizure often report a deja vu sensation, some report fear, some report a burnt toast smell or a metallic taste in their mouth before their seizures. When I get a history from the patient, I make sure that there is also a witness's account of what happens during these times. The family members tell me that the patient spaces out and is looking blankly through the air, just looking past them, without any awareness of the surroundings. Some patients may have lip smacking, swallowing movements, fidgeting of their hands, or a dystonic posturing of one of those arms. So let's have a look at one of a typical EEG that you will see in patients with temporal lobe epilepsy. So I want to first challenge you, look at this EEG, and see if you are able to identify what channels are recording from the left hemisphere and what channels are recording from the right hemisphere and if you are able to identify normal waveforms as well as abnormal waveforms. So what you see here is the highlighted channels all end with an odd number. So channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left hemisphere of the brain channels that end with an even number are recording from the right hemisphere of the brain and channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. So once you are comfortable with where those channels are recording from, try to see if you are able to identify what kind of frequency you, are, you can see in the occipital head regions. So this is what we see here you can count approximately 8 to 9 waves within that one second. And on this particular EEG, the number of waves on the left hemisphere, what you see on O1, and that in the right hemisphere, what you see on O2, is very similar. So no, there is not much asymmetry here. Now moving on to the next page here, I want to highlight that there are certain waveforms which are produced by eye blinking artifact. Let's see if you are able to identify that. If not, these are the two waveforms here, and then you can see a couple more, just two seconds from the first ones. These are eye blink artifacts. And you can see that eye blink artifacts because the electrodes FP1 and FP2 mostly record these artifacts, that's where you expect to find those. If you see the same morphology in the occipital head region, I'm sure you will not call those eye blink artifact. On this page, let's see if you're able to identify where are the abnormalities. If you're able to identify the abnormality, that's good for you, but if not, let me just point it out to you. So these are sharp waves or epileptiform discharges seen in the right hemisphere. In particular, you see these in the right temporal head region. If you see epileptiform discharges on the EG, it basically tells you that this person has a relatively higher risk of having seizures coming from the right temporal head region. You should also compare the frequency between the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. So if you look over here on the right hemisphere, 
and then compare it with the left hemisphere, you see that the right hemisphere has more slowing, more slow waves in the right hemisphere than the left hemisphere. So this also directs your attention towards a possible structural abnormality in the right hemisphere. On this page, I've just changed the montage. So this was a different montage. And if you look over here, this is a different montage. That is how each channel, how each electrode is compared to the subsequent electrode. So if you look over here, it is still, this is the right hemisphere that we are recording from. And the epileptiform discharges and the slowing is most prominent over here. So this is what you are able to identify very clearly. When you're looking at an EG, make sure you always look at the cardiac rhythm, the ECG. This is what we have here. In this case, the rhythm does not show a significant abnormality, but I've come across patients who will have a very significant bradycardia, and in fact, we've had patients who will go in asystole during the EG, and in fact, some of those patients have ended up getting pacemakers. So it's extremely important when you're looking at an EEG, make sure you look at the EKG at the same time. What you see here, this is muscle artifact, and you should be able to identify muscle artifact. And if the muscle artifact is significantly affecting the EEG signal, you can use certain filters. Looking at this EEG, are you able to identify any asymmetry between the alpha rhythm. Previously, we saw that the alpha rhythm seemed very symmetric, but when you look at over here, compare T5 O1, which is recording from the left hemisphere, and T6 O2, which is recording from the right hemisphere, you can see a well-developed, well-regulated alpha rhythm in the left occipital head region, but you see slowing in the right occipital head region. So there is an asymmetry, which is abnormal. On this particular page, what I want to highlight is these red lines that you see at the bottom of the page. These are basically showing you that the patient is undergoing intermittent photic stimulation. So you should be able to recognize what those lines means. Now, moving on to the MRI of the brain. So when patients present with those spacing out episodes, blanking out episodes, and you diagnose them with temporal lobe epilepsy, you wonder if those patients have any structural abnormality that explains those symptoms. So anytime a person presents with a seizure, you need to have proper neuroimaging to make sure you do not miss a brain tumor, you do not miss an abscess, you do not miss a stroke, you do not miss any structural abnormalities that can account for the seizures. Now pause the video for a second and see if you're able to identify the abnormality here. So let me point it out to you. So this is the abnormality that we are looking at. This is what is called mesial temporal sclerosis. Compare this with the left hemisphere and look at the asymmetry between the two hemispheres. On the right hemisphere, you see that is, there is atrophy of the right hippocampus. There is an increased signal and there is flattening of the hippocampus. All those features are suggestive of mesial temporal lobe sclerosis or mesial temporal sclerosis. It's called mesial because it's close to the midline and it is a sclerosed tissue. And the important thing, the good thing about these findings is if this patient is refractory to medical treatment, if you've tried three or more anti-epileptic medications and the patient still continues having seizure, this is a kind of a patient who may be a good candidate for epilepsy surgery. And if you determine that be the case, make sure you refer the patient to a comprehensive epilepsy center for evaluation. In some cases where we do not have a clear structural abnormality, we do further investigate with intracranial depth electrodes. Let's see if you're able to identify the depth electrodes. If not, let me point it out to you. These are the depth, these are the cables that are inside the brain placed in by a neurosurgeon. And if you look carefully, you will be able to identify the independent electrodes uh, by the artifact. So this is, these are the electrodes. 
this is another this is another view this is a coronal view of the mri and here you can see the probes going into the hippocampus and you can see the independent electrodes there as part of a surgical workup when we are trying to determine the candidacy of for epilepsy surgery we also do spect scans and pet scans i have a picture of a pet scan so this is a pet scan and you look for asymmetries in metabolism that can help you identify the seizure focus let's see are you able to identify what is abnormal about this mri so let me point it out to you this is a person who had a standard left temporal lobectomy and this is where the temporal lobe was resected i'm going to move it back and forth so you can see that this person had a left temporal lobectomy so i think that will suffice for now thank you for your attention